do you know teleportation, right? This is exactly what I didn't use actually to come to here, so I just use a normal way of transportation, modes which are existing. But I, want, I would like to ask you, how did you come or join uh, here this event? So raise your hand if you use the train, for example. Not bad. Who used uh, a car to come here? So why? <laughs> So who, used, who, who was flying, for example, who was flying or uh, f flying from far away uh, to, to come to here just to visit us and to, to see this event? Nobody? Nobody from New York, uh, Sydney? No? <laughs> Disappointed. <laughs> so let's come back to the, uh, the cars. So the, we are going to talk about mobility in general, but I want to focus about the cars and, and the reasons of uh, frustrations. The cars and being stuck on a traffic jam is one of the top <laughs> ten of... Uh, reasons of uh, frustrations and stress in the world, which is not, not something we should neglect because it's coming and creating some very strange reactions as well, and you are going to stress also others. Um, one of the reasons of this uh, traffic jam is also the, the, the growth of population. Uh, we, we have been waiting till the 1800s 18, to reach a billion of population, and now we need just 12 to 15 years uh, to add 1 billion, which is an amazing number. So, of course, I'm not uh, against uh, people making babies, so just keep going, but not now. <laughs> <laughs> you have a time for it. So, how to solve this problem, this situation of uh, getting stuck on traffic jam? Um, is we, we hear a lot about autonomous uh, cars today, so it's advertised everywhere. So, we are not allowed to make some advertisement, but there's Tesla, Audi, uh, BMW, Daimler, who are <laughs> working on these topics. Um, and, but is it going to solve the problem of mobility? So having a, a car which is driving better than a driver today, is it going to solve the problem of stress and congestion on, in the city? My belief is not, by itself at least. So there are other modes of transportation, which we don't talk a lot about it today. There's no advertisement at all. For example, trains. This is one of the most um, safest mode of transportation which exists in the world today. Uh, but it's seen as a very conservative way. It's seen as very conservative because we don't talk about it. You never see any advertisement about the train itself or the system which is controlling the train because it's not only uh, the vehicle which is uh, moving. Um, there's all the electronics and all the software which is moving the trains. More than that, the train is one of the least um, modes of transport which is polluting the, 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 the world, which is in the air with the, the CO2 emission. So we talk about less than 2% of CO2 emission. And when you take um, the comparison between the trains, or one, just one train, and how many people you can transport or you can compare it with a car, we talk about one train equal to between 250 to 1,000 cars, which is really amazing. So to, to understand this visually, this is what it means. So one train can replace all these cars which are stuck in the, in, the, in, the, in the road. So this mode of transportation today are moving to autonomy. Many people talk about, yes, but this is already existing since 30 years. What is existing is automatic trains, so automatic metros. This is what you have seen in some metros, like if you go to Paris, for example. Or if you go to this skyline, sky, sky trains, which are um, in, in, uh, in airports, for example. These trains are in a very close environment. They know where they are going. They have specific sensors for moving. So there is no external events. So that's why they are automatic. This, this works like uh, a factory, like automation in a factory. Autonomous trains is a bit different. It's more complex. It works outside, open environment. Open environment means everything could happen. You can have cars, you can have ca cows, you can have camels, you can have trucks, you can have people jumping on the tracks. So things which are not planned could happen, so the train needs to be more intelligent to do that. That's why we talk about autonomous. That's the main difference between the two things. But why operators, why cities now are interested on autonomous trains? There's a real reason. It's not just about uh, to copy the cars or about technology. They want to increase the capacity. They want to run more trains. They want to transport more people on, on the existing network already. Uh, so with this, you have more capacity. You have more availability. So trains running all the time. 
And uh, this limitation of today is, is coming from uh, the way of the signalings which, which has been done in the, the past years. You can run only one train in one section, even if it's 10 kilometer section. So in the future with autonomous trains, you can run more trains which are following each other with different types of technologies, satellites or different sensors or following the trains. The other thing is the trains will be able to take some quick decisions quicker than a driver because the sensors, obstacle detections are connected directly to the trains to brake very quickly and to have a safest system as uh, a people who is, who is doing a lot of things at the same time, who is the driver today. So improving safety, security, it means detecting people, detecting obstacles which can damage um, the life of people on the trains and damage physically the train. So this is something very important. This is something which we can really enhance with autonomous trains compared to the situation of today. And also anticipation. So we need to improve um, or reduce the delays and the downtime of, uh, of the trains and the network and improving the punctuali punctuality. Sorry. So we need to anticipate. We have to do some predictive maintenance. We have to see what's happening today in order to pre predict what's happening, what's going to happen in the future. For example, falling tree, a tree which moved a little bit, or a rock which is moving. So a train can detect this, report it, and then we can have some actions in the future to avoid some damages. So all these things will bring a, a lot of flexibility to run more trains. More trains means more complexity. So all these trains need to be orchestrated by a centralized system. So this orchestration is really a key thing which has been developed since years with, uh, within the railway industry. Um, which makes sure that all the trains are starting at the right time, ending at the right time, arriving at the right time, and also solving some conflicts if there is any obstacles, if there is any train blocking a certain section. This is a system which is going to find different routes in order to, to make the train uh, arriving on time as planned. So when I've been, I started to work in this industry 10 years ago, so I'm, I'm not that, that young. So some people were asking me, you have been doing robotics, you have PhD in robotics, you have worked on mobile robots, you have done some robotics competitions. Uh, why you work in railway? And they ask you this question really with a phase that you just want to give up. And I, always, uh, I was trying to answer at least, I was believing on that at the time, that this is like robotics. Trains are moving, they have sensors, they, and this is coming more and more, the technology is being developed more and more. And when I see today uh, articles about uh, robot on trains, or robotics, or uh, the biggest robot in, in the world is a train. And seeing also some many uh, projects which is being started today, I'm really proud to see that today. And happy that I moved forward on this technology as well. So you see the various technology which is used actually in, this, uh, in the railway industry, it's really, really rich. We talk about safe software hardware, this is really the basics of uh, railways, that's why this is the safest mode of transport we use. But we talk also about advanced sensors for vision. A train needs to see, think, um, artificial intelligence, that's why it needs to take some decisions. And also big data for some prediction, satellites, cybersecurity, which is very important. But when we talk about this dedicated building block here, which is artificial intelligence, everybody gets scared about it. When we talk about artificial intelligence, we talk about uh, machine or robot which is going to replace a human being. So what does it mean here for, for drivers? By the way, is there any trained driver here? No? Okay, so I will tell you the truth. <laughs> What's going to happen is going to happen the same as what happened in different industries. So there were some developments, everybody was worried about what's going to happen. For example, there was invention of 3D movies. Everybody was worried about the actors. The actors are going to disappear. What happened? The actors were becoming a part of these movies. They, are, they were augmented. They were super actors, and they were part of these 3D movies. As you can see, it's a car. I was talking about uh, advertisement. There's no, nothing about the trains. It's only car. There was cars. There was planes. Nothing about trains. So we need to talk with Pixar for this. Same thing for photography. There was, uh, the, when the pho when photography has been invented, everybody was saying, okay, the painters are going to disappear. What happened? The painters did not disappear. They were part of the story and they were even inventing all these special effects. So these this were the first person who were modifying the pictures to have special effects. And you can see that uh, painters and artists are still there. 
So what is going to be the role of a driver? A driver tomorrow is going to be augmented. He's going to have a different role. He's going to be part of the solution. He's going to be the hero to solve some specific, very specific situations, which is going to happen in the network. So the driver is going to be augmented. He's going to be sitting maybe not necessarily in the cabin. He's going to stay in the train, but maybe also to stay in an office. So in terms of condition of work, this is a real advantage for them. But let's talk about what is the, the goal today. The goal today is to move the people from door to door. Very often we talk about moving people door to door. We forget from where the door starts and where it ends. The door doesn't start from a station to another station. It starts from the position where you, are, you want to travel till the position you want to end. So this is why it's important to connect different modes of transport. The train is not going to solve everything, but it's going to bring a lot for transportation. The autonomous car is not going to solve everything, but it's going to bring a lot in terms of last miles, so from door to the station, for example, a lot of flexibility, but having more capacity on, um, on train movements, more availability of the trains, uh, is going to bring a lot for the global mobility. So it's like having a technology which is the best, and not using it and not connecting it for, for with the rest of the technology, it's just useless. It's like you have the best talent in the, in the company, but they are not able to collaborate with others. So we know what will be the result. What needs to optimize is really the transition between the different modes of transportation. So it means the car to the train, train to the car, to the truck or to the bus. So you had all experience how long you are waiting uh, in, in the airport, for example, or train station waiting for your trains. And this is what needs to be a little bit shorter really shorter, planned, and this is what autonomy can bring. This reminds me a little bit on, on the athletics as well when I see the timer there. Um, it's not necessarily the fastest athletes who are going to win the race the 400, uh, four, four times 100 meters. It's the athletes who are, have the best transmission and the optimized transmission between each other. And the, the, the good start and not very early, not very late. So this is very, which is very important between the connection between different modes of transportation. That's why they need to be connected. They need to be orchestrated between each other in order to have a seamless mobility. So the person who wants to travel is not going to think how long he's going to wait and how long delays he's going to have. And this will be the future. And this is where all the transport industry needs to change their mindsets and work all together to have uh, the best solution for mobility for the people. Why I'm saying this? Because the goal at the end is not to move the vehicles, but is to transport people with their dreams and their needs. Thank you very much. <laughs>